Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard, and today we're going to be taking a look at another Taurus revolver. This is the model 627. Let's take a closer look at it. All right, it's pretty safe to assume that I like Taurus revolvers. This is the M44. This is the 942 22 Magnum, the other 942 22 Magnum. This is the 605. This is also a uh, 38 Special or 357. Let's get these other ones out of the way and we'll take a look at these two first of all. Okay, the 605 and the 627 are both 38 caliber or 357s. They're a little different. This is a medium frame. This is a little bit smaller frame on here. They look pretty much identical. Same style grips on them, everything. Same thing, just looks like a smaller one. But this one, the 605, is a five shot cylinder on there. The 627, and it's got this little protective cover for the rear sight there. The 627 is a seven shot revolver. So that's gonna give you obviously two more rounds than that, but your typical revolver is a six shot, six shooter. But this one, the Tracker series is a seven shot. Now this one has a four inch barrel on it. It's got the full under lug on it with a little cutout to protect the um, ejection rod on there. It's eight and three quarter inches overall length, five and 5.3 inches high. It weighs 35 ounces or 2.18 pounds. It's got a transfer bar safety system on it. So you can see the little bar right there in the back of it. And if you don't have the trigger pulled when the hammer releases, that transfer bar will actually drop down out of the way and not fill in the gap between the hammer and the firing pin. So that's one of the safety features on there. It does have the little lock piece on the back of the hammer. Uh, there's a key that comes with it. You can take and lock it, and pretty much all of the new Tauruses are like that. Uh, with the exception of the 942s, they don't have that on there. The 44 does, I believe. Yep. But for some reason, the um, 942s do not have that on there. Um, it's matte stainless steel, the barrel, the frame, and the uh, cylinder all matte stainless steel. And the Tracker series is offered at anywhere from 17 HMR all the way up to 44 Magnum and most calibers in between, most, not all, 357, 38, 22, 17 HMR, and 44. Uh, I did not see any other ones available uh, in the Tracker series, but a couple different barrel lengths. They're offered in a four inch or a six and a half inch barrel length. And the only thing I seen on the 44 Magnum one was only the four inch barrel. I did not see the uh, six and a half inch barrel length on the 44. This one, uh, everything, I have not shot it yet, but everything is, is pretty smooth on it. With the exception of the release there sometimes, it seems to want to hang up, that pin seems to want to hang up. And it's a little spring loaded pin that goes down in a little hole right there in the middle and your, your, um, thumb release right there pushes the pin out so that this will go in and slide past it. But it does have an adjustable rear sight on it, both for elevation and windage. Uh, it does have kind of a high vis uh, ramp front sight on it. It is not adjustable, only your rear sight. But for a uh, personal protection gun, this is a pretty decent choice. Not quite as compact as the 605, or 602, I can never remember, 605, but um, it's gonna give you a little better uh, velocity because it's gonna have a little better, a little longer barrel length on it, still the full under lug. And this one is ported on the front there. There is an expansion chamber in there that's just a little bit wider than the ID of the barrel where the lands and grooves are. And then these ports on here help keep that muzzle down. We're gonna take this thing out on the range and both fire, we'll fire both 38 specials and some uh, 357s in it and see what kind of um, reduction in muzzle rise this provides there. All right, we're out here on the range with the Taurus Tracker 627. And I've got two boxes of ammo here. I've got, both of them are federal. These are Federal 38 Special. These are 158 grain. They are a lead round nose. These are 357s. They are 158 grain, but they are a jacketed soft point. Now the difference in 38 and 357 is not much. It's the identical case. The problem is 
well, not a problem, but the difference is, is there's a little more powder in the 357 than there is in the 38. So what they've done is they've made the case just a tiny bit longer on the 357, and that's to prevent you from accidentally putting it in a 38 special. Because you can put the same amount of powder in a 38 case that should be in a 357, but that'll can create a dangerous situation. Now, any firearm that is chambered for 357 will handle 38 specials and they will also handle 38 plus P's, which are kind of like a mid grade between 38 special and 357. Not quite as much power as a 357, a little bit more than a 38 special. But something that's chambered in 38 special only, you need to check with the manufacturer to see if it will handle the 38 plus P's. Um, I, I try to only buy 357, and that's just because I know it'll handle 38s, and 38s are usually a lot cheaper than 357s. So it, if you're going to get out on the range and just do some plinking and playing around and stuff, it's great to use 38s because it's not going to hit the wallet as hard as it would with the 357s. But if you're going to carry this for personal protection, and this is not so much your everyday concealed carry type firearm as it is probably a uh, going hiking somewhere where there's bears or whatever, a 357 is a decent caliber to carry with you for a little woods protection. You might want to go with something bigger. I mean, you need to arm yourself with the territory you're traveling to. I don't know that I would want to travel with a 357 in Alaska where there's some really big bears, uh, probably a 44, but um, 357 for just about anywhere in the lower 48 is probably going to be not a bad choice anyways. Anyways, I've got seven rounds of 38 specials loaded up in here, and we're going to see if this ported barrel on here actually does any good and give it a few shots at the silhouette target. Okay, here we go. Seven rounds of 38 specials out here on the range. I cannot believe the weather today. This is March 5th, somewhere around there. And we've, you've seen the saloon a couple weeks ago where everything out here was covered with snow, but it's actually a beautiful, almost 70 degree day today. So anyways, we're gonna do seven shots, center mass on the silhouette target. We're gonna do action first. I did that seventh one double action. And my favorite thing about revolvers, I am a huge fan of revolvers, especially the old cowboy ones. But this right here, since I reload these, I don't have to go hunting for these things everywhere. I dump them right in my hand and they're ready to go get reloaded when I'm ready. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all right there, a little low and to the left. And wouldn't you know it, that's, uh, that's probably me. I'm pretty sure it is anyways. Let's get uh, seven rounds of 357 loaded up in this thing and see how it does. We'll do some headshots. All right, now these are the 357 jacketed soft points. And uh, revolvers are awesome. I love them because they're so easy to load. They're so easy to unload. And they're extremely reliable. Revolvers very seldom have any issues. I won't say they don't, but they very seldom have any issues. Here we go. That's seven rounds. Let's do some headshots. That was seven shots. It's still got a pretty decent kick to it. You feel it in the back of your hand there a little bit. Not extremely painful, um, but probably a little less impact to your palm than the 605, which is a lot smaller gun without the ported barrel on it. Let's go take a look at that. That was all, they were all pretty low, but let's go look at it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably come pretty close to decapitating them, but they're all going to be, uh, with the exception of that one and maybe those two, they're all going to be incapacitating shots there anyways. Um, and, and like I said, they were all low. It might have been me pulling downward when I'm pulling the trigger on it. I'm not sure, but um, these were pretty good. And like I said, most of these were single action, except for I did one double action. All of these were double action and they all pulled a little bit low and these were all 357s and these were all 38s. Let's, uh, let's do seven more, why not? All right, I've got seven more rounds of 38 specials here this time. We're gonna do seven more and we're gonna do headshots with this one and I'll do those double action and just see if there's any, any difference in it. Maybe it's just me, 
maybe i i'm pretty sure it's me anyways all right seven shots 38 special head shots double action they're all still low actually i got one of them really high and I, it looks like i missed with two Ooh, that's terrible you can definitely feel the difference between the 38 specials and the 357s there's definitely these are a lot softer shooting uh they're just they're, they're a lot of pleasure when you're shooting these things and it's cheaper and they're fun all right i'm gonna load seven more rounds of 357 up in here and i've got a smaller target set up there on the uh up there beside the silhouette target's head and we're going to give it a few shots out of the caldwell matrix here and see if it's just me pulling it or whatever. Maybe I can do a little better shooting with this thing. Who knows? I am going to do them uh, single action only. Okay, one, two, three, four. Those are a, a fairly decent group, I guess, but not at all where I'm aiming. It does have adjustable rear sights on it, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust these things, and I'm going to take my other uh, three shots and see if I can get a little closer to there. Okay, one, two, three, that did bring them up a little bit. I could turn it a couple more clicks. I'm still shooting to the left and I do not have a screwdriver out here with me, small enough to adjust my windage on there, but um, not terrible. I'm gonna do seven more shots with the 38 specials and just see what I get. Okay, that was definitely a lot better on the elevation, not so much on the windage. I still need to adjust that over a little bit because I actually think it's the sights on here. I think I need to adjust them because, I mean, I consistently pull low and to the left, but not that consistently anyways. Now with the 38s, I was a little higher. I was aiming right up about there. I also, with my last uh, three shots of the 357, was aiming up there too. So maybe, I don't know, the velocity of the 357s, the weights are the same on the bullets. Maybe that has something to do with it shooting a little bit low, but it is an adjustable sight system on it, so I can fix that. All right, guys, there it is. There is the Taurus Tracker 627, seven shot 38 caliber or 357 revolver. Nice stainless steel finish on it. It's a matte stainless steel finish. And I, like I said, you can tell I'm a big fan of Taurus revolvers. I'm a big fan of any revolvers, but especially Taurus revolvers because the price is not terrible on them. Um, I do not right offhand recall what I paid for this, but I'll put it up here somewhere. Uh, it, they're, they're good guns. They really are. Uh, this one, like I said, had a little issue with the cylinder getting a little sticky, um, but it... It does open up, and I'm sure over a little bit of time, it will get to where it opens a lot easier. And sometimes it just takes a little little wiggle and it pops right out. Um, they do get dirty, that's for sure. So there's a lot of smoke on here where the, um, the soot and, and carbon and everything is blown out of there and the cylinder gets smoked up. But the nice thing about being a matte stainless steel finish on them is they're pretty easy to clean up. There's not a lot of... Uh, a lot of crazy mechanics in these things. They don't rely on the gas pressures to operate it. It's all mechanical. Everything is nice and tight in there. And I mean, like I said, they very seldom ever fail. That's why a lot of people, when they do carry these out in the woods or whatever, when they're, you know, personal protection or backup or whatever, they carry revolvers because there is, they don't jam. They don't 
uh, if they misfire, you can just pull the trigger again and go to the next round. You don't have to eject one or anything. I am a huge fan of revolvers. And the 627 is not a bad one either. It does throw me off a little bit with the ACD stuff or OCD stuff because seven shots does not work out right with the uh, the number of rounds in the in the case there. Anyways, if you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos, hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for taking a look at another Taurus revolver with me, the 627 Tracker.